Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to another edition of Questions for Corbett. I'm your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And you will remember, if you cast your mind back to late March, that I answered a question on this series about how is Japan reacting to the then-unfolding coronavirus crisis, in which I noted that Japan was proceeding very much business as usual, as if nothing whatsoever were, was happening, because, as I noted in that video, the Japanese government at that time was pretending that the Japanese... Uh, 2020 Summer Games were going to go ahead as planned. And I did make the bold prediction in that video that as soon as the Olympics were postponed or cancelled, that the Japanese government would get on board and get on the script with the rest of the world. And lo and behold, that's precisely what happened. Uh, as I've noted a few times now in various interviews that I've done, it was precisely the same day that the Tokyo 2020 games were postponed that the Tokyo governor came out and said, a virus hotspot is developing in Tokyo, guys, and if you don't behave, we might have to lock down. And that was followed, that threat was followed through uh, a week or two later when a, a state of emergency was declared in Tokyo and Osaka and five other prefectures here in Japan. And then that was further followed up about a week later in mid-April when the Japanese government, led of course by Prime Minister Abe, declared a national emergency here in Japan over the coronavirus crisis. So of course that raises the natural question, what exactly does it mean when the Japanese government declares a national emergency? And the simple answer is that it means precisely nothing. <laughs> That's right, there has been no shutdown, no stay at home, no uh, mandatory quarantines, no mandatory business closures of any sort, because as even the Japanese government admits, it does not have the authority to do anything of that sort or to enforce it legally at any rate. So while certain things have been different here, uh, there has been no mandatory lockdowns as we have seen in other parts of the world. And my experience here in rural Western Japan, no doubt different than the experience in Tokyo or Osaka or other virus hotspots, but even there, as I say, no mandatory business closures or mandatory stay-at-home orders were enforced or enforceable. Now, here in my part of the country, uh, there was a closure of the local shopping mall for about a week. Oh no, heaven forfend. But other than that, uh, again, businesses have largely remained open. Restaurants and eateries, uh, again, largely open for business and people eating there as normal. Uh, there are, of course, people who wear masks here, but this is Japan. There are always people who wear masks. I suppose there are probably more people wearing masks than usual, but it is not a, uh, it's not a political thing here, and there is no consequences for not wearing masks. So once again, no lockdown, no mandatory closures of any sort, no stay-at-home orders, nothing of that sort, which does make you wonder, doesn't it? I thought Japan was a rule-following country. How come they don't seem to have very strictly enforced rules or enforceable at all legally rules about closures and lockdowns? Well, that all goes back to the Japanese Constitution, which, as we all know, I'm sure, was drafted up in the post-war period under the careful tutelage of the American administration and uh, General MacArthur, and I think most famously has Article 9, the renunciation of war, which actually commits Japan to be a peaceful nation and to renounce war and to, to not have a standing army. So, of course, there is no Japanese military. There's no army. There's just a self-defense force, which happens to be the sixth largest military in the world. But anyway, I've talked about that before. But as any number of explainers in the press, Western and otherwise, will tell you, you know, the reason that Japan doesn't the state of emergency doesn't mean a lockdown and can't mean a lockdown is because the Japanese constitution enshrines the liberties of the people, civil liberties uh, in, in black and white. And there's just nothing that the Japanese government can do about that. Now, I find it fascinating that although you can read that explanation, as I say, in any number of mainstream outlets, uh, they never, ever, ever point to a specific article in the Japanese constitution. They always just say that the constitution prohibits uh, J Japan from doing that. Uh, I, I, at least 
from my reading, I can see several points where they could quite easily come in and like every other nation say, well, we have to do it because, uh, for example, Article 13, all of the people should be respected as individuals. Their right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness shall, to the extent that it does not interfere with the public welfare, be the supreme consideration in legislation and in other governmental affairs. So there, right there, is a door big enough to drive a Mack truck through. Does not interfere with the public welfare. Well, this is a time of emergency. So I don't know. It does seem a bit strange that although government, the, the government themselves claim, well, we just don't have the power to do this, it does seem that if they really wanted to, they could, like every other nation, find ways to interpret their constitution in their favor. Uh, but they are not doing so. And I think that is probably part of a longer term strategy that is at play, which is to basically say, look, we want to be able to do things. We need to be able to lock down in times of emergency. Look at this pandemic that's killing billions of people around, uh, millions of people, uh, hundreds of, th a few people around the globe. And we need to be able to completely lock down and shut down and force people into their homes like everywhere else in the world. But we just can't do it because of this damn constitution that binds our hands. If only we could change the constitution. And wouldn't you know it, of course, that has been a key plank of Abe, uh, Prime Minister Abe's election and re-election campaigns here over the past several years. He has made it part of his political objective to change the Japanese constitution, although that is usually and specifically in light of Article 9, trying to change that so that uh, there is more allowance for an offensive military capability of uh, the Japanese government, at least the the uh, the legal framework and, uh, to allow such a thing to occur, although it is already, as I, as I say, they already have the sixth largest military, but he wants to put that in black and white and change the constitution. Well, here's another time. Well, look at this damn constitution guaranteeing people their liberties. If only we could change it. So I think this is part of a longer political stratagem to basically say, oh, there's nothing we can do unless we change that pesky constitution. And I think that's what they're angling towards. But however that is going to transpire, the fact is that Japan did not lock down. And I posit that Japan might be a better case for people to hold up as the example of a country that did not lock down and did not experience the tidal wave of death and destruction that other countries have experienced. Because, of course, people have been holding Sweden up as the shining example, uh, although that has been overplayed. And I'll throw in a link to an article that explains that Sweden isn't exactly the bastion of non-lockdownedness that uh, that its supporters have have made it out to be in the past few weeks. And now, of course, we're seeing that, that particular trap being sprung because now look, oh, now look, Sweden's death rate is ballooning and exploding off the charts because they didn't lock down. So, of course, that's coming back to bite people in their rear end. Well, Japan also did not lock down and did not have the type of explosion in deaths that is being seen elsewhere. Of course, like everywhere else, the amount of cases that are being found is just a function of how many people are being tested for. I mean, how many positives are coming up on these tests is really just a question of how many people are being tested. And Japan has been very stingy in testing, so they have not had a large number of cases found. Convenient enough. But Regardless of how that plays out, there have also not been a tidal wave of deaths as the uh, the people who are saying, look, you have to lock down, were predicting, oh, in a week or two, it'll be flooded, we'll be drowning in dead people. Well, that has failed to transpire. So whatever the case may be, uh, I think Japan might be more of an example of a country that did not lock down and did not suffer the disastrous tidal wave of consequences. Asterisk, always keeping in mind that the second wave, as I say, has been baked into the cake and they're going to make it happen one way or another. And I'm sure they'll look for examples of countries that didn't play ball, didn't play nicely, and they will try to make examples of them. So we'll see what happens here in the future. We'll see how that affects the constitutional framework of what's happening here in Japan. I'll obviously have my eyes on it and I will let you know of any important developments. That's what's going on here in my neck of the woods. As always, I'm interested to hear what's going on in your countries out there. I know there are listeners all around the world, so uh, please update me in the comments section. On that note, I'm going to leave it there for today. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.